Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Let's have a word of prayer and we get right into today's Bible lesson. Father, we just thank you and praise you so. Mm. We seek you, sir, for revelation knowledge, knowledge revealed, revealed knowledge, not just sense knowledge. And we thank you for it, revelation from heaven. Oh, my, we love you so, and we thank you. And we ascribe all of the glory to the sweet name of Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Open your Bibles to the sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians. <clears throat> now, those of you that were with us yesterday, uh, <clears throat> we're from, I'm, I reversed the order a bit at the instructions of the Lord to give you this from the sixth chapter of Ephesians, and then we'll go back over to the fifth chapter of the book of Mark because there, there's a connection here that's extremely important. Uh, yes, sir, I'll do that. All right, <clears throat> Ephesians chapter six. Verse 10, finally, my brethren, be strong, how? In the Lord and in the power of his might. Strong in the Lord. Now, this is not just talking about physical strength, but it has to do with physical strength. But strength, first of all, must come into the inner man the, the spirit being. The, 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 the human man. I'm going to stop right here just for a second. Um, people, you know, get all hung up <laughs> on sons of God. Well, now, wait a minute. that we are called mankind. The man was created first. We know that. Well, I don't understand that. Well, just read the book and go. <laughs> but women are equally as important to men. Now, the scripture says to treat your woman as a weaker vessel. It did not say she's a weaker vessel. It said, treasure her and treat her as though she is. I do my best to treat Gloria like she's very fragile because she is a, she's my treasure. She's the first person that ever loved me unconditionally. And in just Hey, we've been married 59 years and it's just been heaven on earth because she made it that way. So she's my treasure. Well, she, you talk about somebody that's strong and uh, there ain't no way, girls, in no way. You, if I could, I wouldn't have a baby. Dear God, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. oh, I stood there and she's going through all that and I'm standing at the end of the bed crying like a baby and she's going, <laughs> she's strong. She's strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, where does that go? The joy of the Lord is our strength. And that will come over into this physical body when you feel like you've been pulled through a keyhole and you ha, 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 and just ha, ha yourself right on out. Yes. Yes. Amen? Amen. Put on the whole armor of God. You have to put it on. Nobody can suit you up but you. 
You have to put it on. That you may be able to stand, stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. Now you can see here, and, and, and I don't mind telling you where I got this. My mentor, Kenneth Hagin. My father in the faith, Oral Roberts. And, but a short time after I enrolled at Oral Roberts University, I was 30 years old. But Gloria and I were scripturally illiterates. We didn't have anything to unlearn. <laughs> we didn't know anything to start with. The first thing we ever heard was faith. And we hit it like a, like a chicken hitting a bug, man. <laughs> Oh, man, glory to God. So, and he was in a pastor's home. He was preaching in his church, or teaching more, in his church. And his little girl came in. She was about 11 years old. And so after the service that night, he and the pastor were in the, he was staying there in the home with the pastor. And uh, so, they were discussing the word and so forth over a sandwich and a glass of milk before they went to bed. And the little daughter came in and said, Daddy, I got to go to school in the morning. You come pray with me. And so it's about 11 o'clock at night. She, and he said, oh, I forgot. Let's just kneel down here and Brother Hagin and I'll pray. Well, that is good enough for her. And so Brother Hagin turned around and just facing the chair there and when he did, suddenly he was in the spirit. And the Lord said, he saw Jesus right up there. He said, I'm going to teach you about demons, evil spirits, and demon possession. Now he talked to him for something like an hour and a half about this. <clears throat> well, I listened to it again and again and again. And he told him these things. Now that, so, I'm, and you can see it here because you start at the bottom and go up to rulers and then go up to heavenly places. So look at this. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Those are the ones that compete demon possess people. Demon possession is someone that is taken over spirit, soul, and body is completely, totally obsessed. I mean, possessed by a devil. A devil. And spiritual witch wickedness in high places or wicked spirits in the heavenlies. Now those... <clears throat> those devils, other than Satan himself, those are the highest ranking evil spirits or unclean spirits that exist. I won't go into the background of that and all that, but now you can see this. We won't turn that a day, but you can see it in the book of Daniel. And you just go back and look at the 10th, 11th, 12th chapters of the book of Daniel. Now, Daniel was on a partial fast and he had been there for 21 days, three weeks. And you remember what happened? The, the, the messenger angel, Gabriel, said, fear not, Daniel, for we heard you the first day. So evidently he, he began to think, they, they haven't heard me. Now, he didn't have the name of Jesus. Fasting was a weapon. But, now listen to this. For the, well, yeah, we're going to have to go over there. <laughs> I could quote it to you, but and uh, Uh, 
Okay. The 10th chapter of Daniel. Um, and Gabriel said unto him, <clears throat> O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, I'm looking at the 10th chapter and 11th verse. Understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I'm come for your words. It took me three weeks to get here, but I'm here. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, or Iran, Iran, is the right way to say it, so I say Iran. <laughs> withstood me one and twenty days, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, Michael, the archangel Michael, the angel of war, now, when da David said to Goliath, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, this is what he was referring to. The angelic armies of God. That's what he said to Goliath. So Michael obviously was involved in this. But now look. One of the chief princes came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. My 19th verse. Be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened from words, spoken by an angel, and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Then said he, Knowest thou whereof I came unto thee? And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia? And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Greece shall come. These are political stronghold demons. Now, I don't know about other nations because I'm an American. I was born here, raised here. That's why politicians get elected to office go to Washington, D.C., and do and say things they said they would never do and say. Right there. Those high-level devils, they're the ones that assign to governments, and in some cases, Satan himself. But the name of Jesus has authority over the whole nasty bunch. Amen. 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 So now let's go back to the fifth chapter of the book of Mark. And now we get insight and concept here of what Jesus was dealing with, with whom he was dealing. And we can see things in this we, I, I like to say it like this. We go widescreen here because we know things. Amen? Amen. So now that we un know and understand these things, we can, we can get a real insight in what Jesus said. And that's what, brother, that's what, and Jesus, uh, when, when he appeared to Brother Hagin, he was just a little higher than he was. And all of a sudden, this little demon came out and jumped in front of him, yakety, yakety, yak, yakety, yakety, yak. And he put out something like this, like, like this black smoke. And Jesus just kept on talking. And Brother Hagin said, why don't he do something about this? Doesn't he know I need what he's saying? I, why don't he do it? Why doesn't he do something about this? And finally, he got tired of it and said, in the name of Jesus, shut up, get out of the way. And that little devil fell and ran off. Now, listen to me. Jesus said to Brother Hagin, if you hadn't done something about that, I couldn't. Brother Hagin said, no, I'm not hearing you right. You said you wouldn't. He said, no, 
I said I couldn't. And then he gave him scriptures. Brother Hagin said, well, I don't, yeah, you know, I, I don't know anything like that. He said, well, there's a whole lot here and you don't know. And so he, he gave him one scripture right after another. One of them, right before he left. All authority has been given unto me, both in heaven and in earth. Therefore, you go, bracket, in the earth, and you preach and you teach, and you baptize. In my name, you cast out devils. In my name, if you drink any deadly thing, it'll not harm you. In my name, you'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In my name, you'll speak with other tongues. In my name, in my name. And then in the book of Ephesians, every knee will bow to that name. Amen. Heaven, earth, and under the earth. The mighty name of Jesus the name of God in the earth. Amen? Amen. So, okay. Now, do we have our spiritual equilibrium here? Yes, so we, we're right there. We're just right there with Jesus. And so we, we have insight here into what's about to happen. They came over, Mark 5, 1, they came over into the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. Now, that, that was just on the other side of the Galilee. When he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, a ruler of the darkness of this world. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, follow me now. Who had his dwelling among the tombs. No man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters or shackles and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Now, whoa, now, wait a minute. What is happening here? That's Samson in reverse. Mm -hmm. Samson was not, could not have been a big burly man. No, he just looked like everybody else until the power of God would come home him. And it was the power of God's might. Ah, now we know what the Spirit of God was referring to through the Apostle Paul. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Amen. And, it, and, and He was so powerful. No, He wasn't. God was so powerful on Him that He pulled that whole temple down around Him. Yeehaw. <laughs> All right. Always night and day. He did not sleep. You know he had to be skin and bones. He didn't sleep. He was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. He was a cutter. Very, very, very close friend of mine was ministering to some young women and they had cutter scars on their arms. And he said to them, in fact, it's Todd White. Oh, what a man of God. Amen. And he said, no, that's not who you are. That's who you used to be and he baptized them in water, and they came up without those scars. Amen. Isn't that marvelous? Yes. No, that's Jesus. <laughs> yes, it's marvelous. <laughs> Magnificent. <Yes>. Amen. <laughs> but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him. Now, class, let me tell you something. Had there been any man on earth that the devil could have stopped stopped from worshiping Jesus, it would have been this man. 
He not only was totally possessed by this one devil, but the, that devil had operating under him from three to 6,000 devils. Couldn't stop him. Immediately he fell and worshiped him. Immediately. How long did it take Jesus to deliver him? About like that. <laughs> you can be delivered like that right now. Right now. Because he's the same Jesus yesterday and today and forever. You can accept him as your Lord and Savior today. Yeah, but you don't, don't, don't start that. Yeah, but Jesus has done everything it takes for you to be born again, except pray your prayer. That's the reason it is so easy. He went to the cross. He went to hell and suffered there like no man has ever suffered or ever will suffer again. And he bore your sins in his own body. He bore your sickness and diseases. He bore your poverty because he was made a curse for us. And poverty is a curse of the law. And today you can have him. I'm telling you, I don't care where you are or what you have done. Just Jesus come into my heart. Amen. Can't be that easy. Yes, it is. You know why? He's easy. Yes. He is so easy. It's not what you've done. It's what he's done. And he loves you. He loves you when you were acting like a fool. Yeah, ask me how I know. <laughs> he loves you. He loves you when whatever it was you did. And he loves you right now. Now, follow me here. And cried with a loud voice, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure, that's that devil talking. That's that devil talking. I've heard him. I've had him talk to me. And he said it, and the ones, I'm just imitating the ones that I have heard. He cried with a loud voice, What am I to do with thee, Jesus, I said unto the most high God, I do you, my God, you torment me not. For he had said, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. One devil. You get out of him right now. And he for he had said unto him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is your name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, but we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send him away out of that country. He was assigned there by the devil and he didn't want to leave. How much time? Who? we're out of these 10 minute broadcasts. It's <laughs> <laughs> We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.